OEM dust covers or gators? Find out what I decided. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So it was really interesting. I posed this question uh, in two places, here on the last YouTube video and on my Instagram uh, page, which is at Urban Monk TV, if you're interested in following that profile, and then tallied up all the votes, and you guys are split exactly down the middle. Um, didn't expect that. So we had, you know, dead tie. Um, Here's my logic that I've landed on since posting this and thinking about it. So here are some of the common arguments for and against uh, the Fort Gators, and uh, mainly that Fort Gators are for scramblers, and scramblers go off-road, and there is mud and dirt and dust and things like that to protect from the seal and um, that on a street bike, which this mainly is, well, absolutely is, uh, that an OEM dust cover is sufficient and it's a cleaner look. So, I like the OEM dust covers. I really do. It is a clean look. Uh, there's a little bit more chrome there, a little bit more shine. Um, another argument would be that you will get moisture trapped inside of the fork gators and over time that will rust the upper tubes on the forks um, and then you don't know about it because they're covered up. Well, yes, but I live in Southern California where it rarely if ever rains and even if uh, it does rain here, I'm not taking this bike out because it's, it's kind of a rolling work of art for me and uh, I don't ever intend for this thing to get wet and there just isn't humidity in the air on average here. So, not too concerned about rust or any corrosion up underneath the gators. Um, then, there's this bit. As a visual element, I really like how the ribbed look of this ties in with the ribbed look of my cylinder head. Well, and the cylinder bank. Um, to me, it, it, it's a tie-in visually. And then the last bit of influence on my decision came from Racer TV, who just uploaded this week a YouTube video on the uh, a build of an R9T Pure. And uh, on that Pure lower priced version of the R9T, the BMW R9T, um, they're, they're using a more conventional fork instead of an upside down fork to save cost. And the builder on that particular bike used gators, and it looked great. And um, the gentleman that publishes and, and does Racer TV uh, has a great design eye. I've got a lot of respect for his opinion. And uh, I was already leaning toward the gators for the reasons that I've already laid out. But um, it kind of pushed me over the edge to go with the gators for now. And I can always change my mind later and take them off. I'll keep these OEM dust covers. So there's my decision, you guys. I'm going to go with the Gators, uh, even though there is some logical reasons to not do that. Um, in this case, I think form is going to win over function, and it's not that the function is really uh, impeded in some way. So, Gators! So you got to come back off. Gator goes on.
to about 20 millimeters lowered as a starting point. I'm just snugging this up. They're not aligned right now. I just want a little tension to hold that 20 millimeters. Um, reason for 20 and not more, I want to see the stance of the bike uh, once it's on both of its wheels first before I commit to something here. But I have ridden this bike and the front end stock is you know pretty soft. Um, so I don't want to go too low or I'm going to be bottoming out. Uh, that's, that's my logic. We'll start at 20, you know, choose whatever you want. Too windy today to paint outside, so I had to pull the car out and uh, the V-Strom and we'll do it in here. Clear coat on the rear swing arm. Got to do that to make a roller. Got to have a swing arm, put the rear wheel on. I must say, painting inside is a much nicer experience. I have amazing control. But I know that this overspray is getting on the golf clubs and all this other stuff. I'm not a big fan of that. It's clear golf. I just want to answer a question that was directly asked by one of the YouTube viewers, uh, Kostya Kuriliuk, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, I'm sorry, um, asked if I could spend a few seconds in the next video, well, it wasn't the next one, but we're doing it here, uh, to show the front wheel spacers and washers sizes. So let me throw that in here real quick. So I'm going to assume that we want to talk in metric here, so we'll do this in millimeters. You've got your axle bolt, you have this spacer here, which is separate from the axle bolt, of course the speedometer uh, gear, and then on the other side, there's uh, a nut here, I gotta hold this. So you got this washer. Um, Axle shaft looks to be, you know, 11.86 millimeters, so call it a 12 millimeter. Yeah, and that's a 12 millimeter inside diameter to your washer. Then outside diameter of this spacer is uh, 22 millimeter. Inside is 15 millimeter. Same thing here, I would imagine. Yeah, that's gonna be 15 millimeter and 22. And then uh, on the other side, 22, and of course it's gotta be 15. So 
um, two spacers, one, two for the other side. Got this thing there, which I don't know if that's seems to be. Uh, how is that connected there? Oh, I think this dust cover holds that on, but it is a, a separate spacer. So you got really two spacers on this side. One, two, the washer, the nut, and the cotter pin. Hope that helps. So I'll just add that this spacer is a bit of a special guy. Um, I don't know that you would have to have it with this flange on here, but this is living inside here. This plastic cap just snaps off of the hub and uh, careful with these plastic tabs inside there. And uh, this guy just protects the wheel bearing from any sort of moisture that would come in through this gap here. Um, you know, I guess it's your call how you're going to protect the bearing from moisture if you didn't have that and you just built a spacer. A uh, big washer, maybe, that would fit around the spacer. I'm assuming you're building one if you want the measurements, so um, maybe that assumption is wrong. Anyways, enough on that. On the speedometer gear drive, um, mine was working very well, and you can take the uh, snap ring off of here, but there's really a, a tight oil seal around there. And you know, if you just want to do a little maintenance lubrication here and not get too involved, um, you can thread out this seal, which has got threads on it, and which I did, and I did that with just a simple snap ring pliers like this and twisted it out, and then I drop it. But um, by removing that, I was able to reach down with a very small screwdriver and I just put a little bit of grease down in that gear drive, the, the worm drive, and then I'll just seal it back up with this seal. So, you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't fixing the part, but if you just want to maintain it and know that you've got good lubrication in there, uh, I think this is a, an acceptable way to go about it. And then I'll just thread this seal back in there. It takes a little while turning it in with this, but uh, it works. Nah, kind of hokey. I just take my time with it until it bottoms out and just get it like barely snug. The cable itself that goes in here will hold this in also, but I just don't think a uh, little extra lubrication is ever a bad idea. So I always put fresh grease on axle bolts through here. Notice where the spacer is. And then these tabs have got to line up with these slots in the hub. So axle, spacer, uh, speedo gear, worm drive gear. Other side, get this cleaned up. Other side is this interesting little spacer with that protective flange there. You can see how that seals that up from moisture quite well. And then uh, just line up three of these little holes and snap this thing down. Oh, sorry, washer and nut, uh, cotter pin.
Anybody see the problem here? The fork tube didn't come down all the way because I've got the speedometer worm drive upside down. Got a jacket back up. That's better. As you can see, it's labeled up with an arrow. So you've got the cap, a washer, and do not forget lock washers down here. And then your nut. Gotta have the lock washer. thing and then I'm going to sign off here for this week but I uh, wanted to ask your guys opinion on something else front fender this is backwards thoughts on the front fender need to have the front fender it provides rigidity to the lower portion of the front suspension uh, more so than you might think and uh, but I don't want this whole entire thing on here I want to shorten it up you know you see where I put the tape on here and I've been uh, soaking the bottom in vinegar to get rid of some rust. I'm also going to do my rust treatment in here. Um, but as far as the chrome goes on this piece, it's dirty right now. But this piece is in very good condition. So uh, for a restorer who was, is working on a GS550, this would be a part that they might like to get their hands on if they don't have a good one or theirs is all rusty. I wish mine, frankly, was more rusty on the chrome surface because I intend to cut it and paint it and I wouldn't feel so bad about maybe neglecting a responsibility to the past. Um, what do you guys think? Do I have a responsibility to the past and I should not cut this thing uh, and try to find one that's in worse shape and cut that and paint that or uh, go ahead and cut this thing? Um, and if you happen to know somebody out there or you yourself have one in worse condition, perhaps we should trade. So some thoughts. I'd love to hear uh, your opinions on it and I'm not going to do anything for now other than treat it for rust and uh, wait until we see what you guys say. Hey, that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to become a monk, subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.